Our second scripture today and our second scripture in the new narrative lectionary of readings we are using moves us along to the story of Abraham and Sarah. Abraham and Sarah were the great immigrants of their time, following God's call to go to a land they did not know. You never know where God might lead you. And so they became the father and mother of the nation of Israel. But they did not have an heir, and they were very old. Abraham was a hundred years old. In one of the delightful joys of the Bible stories, Sarah gives birth to a son, Isaac, which means laughter. It seems that God breaks through when we least expect it. We read from Genesis chapter 21. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son whom Sarah bore. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, Who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in, in his old age. Here ends the reading. May our lives in word and deed reflect what we have heard this day. Let us pray. O God, out of all the words which are spoken this day, out of all the words which are sung, out of all the words which are heard, may it be Your living Word that sticks with us, Your living Word that gives us life this day and every day and into eternal life with You, here and now and forever. In the power of the Spirit and in the name of Jesus we pray. And let everyone say, Amen. Well, the story is told of a little girl who was busy drawing. And her teacher came up to her and, and said, What are you drawing? And she said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher laughed and said, Well, nobody knows what God looks like. And the little girl responded, They will when I get finished. You know, wouldn't it be nice if we could just draw a picture of God and know what God looked like? However, confirmation class of 2019, you are not children anymore. And you know that if there are glimmers and glimpses of God, we know this. If there are glimmers and glimpses of God in this world... They're going to be drawn in our lives, yours and mine. They're, they're going to be drawn in our human life together. Today is Confirmation Sunday, and we are excited for you. And Confirmation Sunday is not the end of your journey. It's the beginning of your journey. What will your faith journey look like with all the challenges that are before us as a world now? You know, I was confirmed when I was in 10th grade. And today I want to share with you four things I wish that I had known when I was confirmed. So, first of all, believe in God and believe in yourself. Believe in God. Now, this sounds like Captain Obvious, right? Okay, in other words, why are you here if, if you didn't believe in God? Okay, I'm not being kept in obvious here. The early Latin word for I believe was the word credo. And credo isn't just about intellectual propositions and saying yes to those. Rather, credo means I set my heart upon. I set my heart upon God, the Creator, who calls us to be co-creators, who calls all of us to care for creation. 
I set my heart upon Jesus, Jesus Christ, who became human like us, who sits where we sit, who feels what we feel, who loves us unconditionally. Credo, I set my heart upon. I believe in God and I believe in myself. Believe in God. Believe in yourselves. Because that's really based ultimately in God's belief in you. It's based on God's deep love for you. You know, you are those who are, have your whole life in front of you. And there are going to be times when you don't know what comes next. None of us knows what comes next, right? There are going to be times when all of us don't know which way is up and which way is down. There are going to be times, I've had it, when my faith was just hanging from a bare thread, if that. But in those times, my friends, remember the words of Jesus at the end of Matthew's Gospel when He told His disciples and told us, I'm with you always, even to the close of the age. And remember the words from Romans chapter 8, and actually they're still up in the whiteboard in our middle school room from our confirmation classes. Those words that say, For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Take those words to heart. Let them stick with you. You are baptized. Never forget that. And baptism means that you are beloved. It means that you, you are beloved by God. That God doesn't make any junk. Yes, believe in God. Believe in yourself. All right. The second of the things I wish that I would have known when I was confirmed is that Jesus is on the side of the down and out. Jesus is on the side of the down and out. Jesus told the story of the prodigal son, right? The prodigal son who took his huge chunk of the family inheritance and wasted it in a faraway land and was lonely and didn't think his father would accept him back. And he was surprised because his father came running for him to accept him back. Jesus is on the side of the down and the out. Jesus talked about the shepherd who left the 99 sheep, right? To go looking for the one lost sheep. Jesus is on the side of the down and out. Jesus conversed with the the woman, the Samaritan woman at the well, a person of another religion, a person of another race, a person of a different gender. You see, males and females back in that day were not supposed to talk to each other in public. And Jesus burst through those barriers. Why? Because God is like that. Jesus is on the side of the down and the out. And the operative word here is plachna. I'm going to teach you a Greek word from the original New Testament here. Splachna. Can you say that with me? Splachna. Now get that CH in there. Okay, it goes. Can you go? Oh, yeah, I love it. All right, say it with me again. Splachna. Yes. Okay, now splachna, in the earliest English translations of the Bible, actually meant, you're not going to believe this, it actually meant bowels. Okay, bowels. Did you know bowels was a word in the Bible? Okay, in the earliest translations in the English Bible, it was translated bowels. And then, later on, it got to be translated as heart. And these days, it's usually translated as compassion. It's that which is deepest within us. Jesus had splachna when he saw the hungry crowds and he fed the 5,000. 
Jesus had splachna when he encountered the widow of Nain who had just lost her only son. Confirmation class, when you feel splachna, when you feel compassion rising up within you, mark this and mark it well because you are very near to God. Jesus is on the side of the down and out. All right. Third of the things that I wish that I had known when I was confirmed in the 10th grade. When someone says to you, I don't believe in God, ask them, if you get the chance, and you won't always get the chance, of course, or it's not always appropriate, or maybe you don't know the person that well, but when someone says to you, I don't believe in God, ask them, what God don't you believe in? And they may give you a myriad of reasons because everyone is a different person. Everyone has their own reasons. But the main thing is to listen and, and to converse if, if, you're, if it's right, if it's appropriate at the time, if you know the person well enough. But chances are, when you ask them, what kind of God don't you believe in, that they'll say something like, well, I don't believe in a God up in the sky with a long white beard. Or, I don't believe in a God who's out to get everybody. Or, you know, I I don't believe in a God who is remote and far away from this very human world, this very beautiful world, this very tragic world. I don't believe in that kind of God. But guess what? As Christians, we don't believe in that kind of God either. You see, as Christians, we believe that the clearest picture of God that we have is Jesus. Jesus who loved the children. Jesus who loved the lilies of the field and the birds of the air. Jesus who wept, who wept at the tomb of his friend Lazarus. Jesus who befriended the friendless. Jesus who took the worst that human beings could throw at him and still from the cross said, Father, forgive them. God, forgive them. You see, this is the God we set our hearts upon. A living presence in the here and the now. All right, fourth and finally today, of the things that I wish I had known when I was confirmed in 10th grade, watch for those God surprises. Now that you're in senior high, okay? Or now that you're continuing in senior high. And then into post high school, and then all the various points in your adult life, watch for those God surprises. A pastor colleague, a Presbyterian pastor colleague, tells about a successful man in his congregation named in her congregation named Eric. And Eric's kids had gone through the youth program, but but uh, Eric came up to her and and asked if she had some time to talk. And she was surprised because she didn't see Eric very often in in church. Uh, in church things and she wondered if maybe his wife was sick or maybe one of the kids was in trouble or maybe just that he wanted to reserve space in the church for a community event well as Eric came in to talk he was visibly shaken and he said I'm going to share something with you that I'm not sure you're going to believe but I don't know who else to tell. And so he said that more than a month before, he was sitting at his kitchen table before the sun came up and he was drinking coffee. And then he paused because he didn't know if there was a category for this, but he said that he felt the presence of God. He hadn't actually known that there was an actual presence of God to be felt. But he knew from that moment on that God knew him and loved him. He knew from that moment on that he 
wanted more from his life than his life had been offering. Confirmation students. Confirmation Sunday is not the end of the journey. It's the beginning. Watch for those God surprises that come when you least expect it. Those God surprises that might come when you're in church, but it'll probably come when you're not in church. Watch for those God surprises here in high school and beyond high school and at every part of your adult lives. Because you see, it's God who is messing around with us. It's God who is at work in your lives and ours as the family of faith. We are proud of you, Confirmation students. We love you. We are your family across our two campuses, St. Anthony Park and Roseville. We're here for you. And we wish you all the best. Thanks be to God for each and every one of you. Amen, congregation. Amen. Amen, congregation. Amen. Amen.